If you have questions or suggestions for future podcasts, please submit them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. School choice. Hi, I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian Economist. Do we really think that the rich should have a choice that the poor don't have? Yeah, think about it. The rich already have the ability to send their kids to any expensive school they choose, but poor kids don't have that choice. Shouldn't we give them the same choice? Now, we live in Texas, where our legislature is trying to decide what to do about school vouchers. To a Christian economist, this is pretty simple. So as an economist, I think people should have the freedom to send their children to a school of their choice. As a Christian, it certainly seems like a person should be free to choose Christian education over secular education. So what's the problem here? Well, people like power, not only over their decisions, but over your decisions, and also over the dollars you pay in taxes. First, they forcefully extract tax dollars from you then when you want to direct the use of those dollars, they want to spend them on two monopoly providers. More on that in a minute. The poor will always be with you. Now, Jesus said that because he knew we would not be able to keep the biblical commandment to run a biblical economy. The school voucher issue is simply another example of that. People should be as free as possible to choose religious education over secular education. If people were better educated, production would increase and our country would be richer. The productivity equation, after all, is what determines a country's wealth. Quote, know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And that's from John 8, 32. And it follows a pretty interesting scripture as well. The preceding verse says, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Okay, so teaching is pretty important to Jesus. So it's through learning that we find the truth. I, I don't have the time today to deal with the philosophy of one truth or multiple truths, but don't miss the point. The scripture clearly says the truth shall make you free, not many multiple truths. Now, in a previous podcast, I quoted Oprah Winfrey saying, quote, education is the key to unlocking the world, a passport to freedom, end quote. So we've determined that people should be able to make a choice about how to unlock that freedom that we're talking about. Now, as I've often said, the intersection of Christianity and economics is freedom. I guess that's poignantly shown in this particular podcast. Monopolies. Now, there are two monopolies at work here. The first one is quite obvious. Public schools don't like to compete with private schools they're happiest when they have a monopoly on education in their community. I'm an academic, and one of the basic ideas in academics is that no one knows at all. That's why most people study at various universities and then join a faculty at another university where they didn't study. Now, I've attended 10 universities. Yeah, but why? Why didn't I get all my education at the same place? Well, because nobody knows at all. You have to study broadly to gain different ideas about the world. Now, when I started teaching economics, I would teach macroeconomics one semester, then microeconomics the next semester. My friend and co-author, Sergei Sedamatov, did the same thing. But that meant that students either had him twice or me twice, and that doesn't make any sense. So then I camped on macro and Sergey camped on micro specifically so that our students at Dallas Baptist University were forced to hear two economic views from two different angles. That's how you build a market for information. Now, in contrast to the previously cited market where the intellectual capital of various people got poured in, the fallen nature wants to reduce that market to a monopoly, and that's what we have in public education. The school superintendent who complains about resources being moved from their monopoly to a competitive environment is probably wearing shoes that she bought in a competitive environment. The computer on her desk and her car in the parking lot were most likely bought in a competitive environment, yet they support two monopolies. First, the public school, and the second, 
is the monopolized teachers union that supplies labor to the school. Now, the second monopoly might be even more devious than the first. The largest teachers union, the National Education Association, spent twice as much on political donations as they did on serving their members in a recent year, which led the Washington Examiner to observe, quote, the NEA looks more like a political organization than a membership organization. They make those donations to politicians who, in turn, help them maintain their monopoly. So, no wonder that a suggested compromise to the school voucher system in Texas is an increase in teacher pay at the monopoly public schools. You see what's going on here? Both sides of the public versus private debate are winning. Who's paying the bill? As I've often cited, the government has no money. It has to come from somewhere, and that somewhere is your tax dollars. Now, I pointed out in podcast number 58 titled, why the U.S. can't be socialist like Sweden, that every family in Sweden gets a voucher to send their children to a school of their choice. Why don't we get that same choice? Because of the two monopolies I've just explained. Competition is good. God made a world with scarce resources and unlimited wants. So there's going to be competition. The Christian worldview contains three elements, creation, fall, redemption. Some people call it the four-chapter gospel, and they include restoration, meaning when Christ returns. When he does, we won't compete. Until then, we're in a time that is east of Eden and west of restoration, trying to figure out how to redeem the world's resources in a way that God intended. Competition in education is one of those ways. Now, think about this. What if there's only one church? Well, our predecessors before Martin Luther had only one choice, but then people protested and the Protestant Reformation soon produced the Lutheran Church, then a cavalcade of denominations sprang up after that. That's good, isn't it? In his book, Gross National Happiness, Arthur Brooks says America is enriched by the competition for religion. Then shouldn't we be enriched also by competition for education? And we are where school choice exists. The value of education. The economics textbook we use at Dallas Baptist University states that each year of education adds 10% to a person's annual income. Now, that's looking backward into history for what's sometimes called positive economics. Looking forward, normative economics says it should be maintained, but there's no guarantee of that. That tradesmen who get starting salaries, you know, around 75,000, that might produce a market that draws some of those college students away from the classroom. Yet, even though I supply higher education for a living, as an economist, I'm okay with the market working that way. Christians and education. Now back to Martin Luther. By the way, in my view, the best book on the great reformer is titled Martin Luther, the one by Eric Metaxas. After surviving a skirmish with the Pope, Martin Luther was the victim of a friendly kidnapping. They took him to Wartburg Castle and hid him away where his first task was education. Yep. He stayed hidden in the castle for 10 months while he translated the Latin Bible into German so the masses could read it. The room where he worked is open to the public. You see, that's another look at a monopoly. The Catholic Church limited the reading of the Bible to only those who could read Latin. And actually, for quite some time in the Middle Ages, it was against the law to own a copy of the Bible. You see how monopolies on education have been used in fa to favor those who had the information over those who are not allowed to have the information. Yet, why is there such a strong historical correlation between Christianity and education? Yet, I personally have taught at Dallas Baptist University, a Christian university, for 30 years. It's because we believe the individual must make the choice to accept or reject God's invitation of salvation. And to do so, the individual must understand that choice. They must be able to read the scriptures for themselves. In contrast, subpar education is a requirement of totalitarian rule. <laughs> I like this quote by the aging comedian George Carlin, quote, Governments don't want a population capable of critical thinking. They want obedient workers, 
just smart enough to run the machines and just dumb enough to passively accept their situation, end quote. That situation is the monopoly of public schools and the teachers' unions. I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian Economist. Fear God, tell the truth, earn a profit. See you next time. For more information, please visit us online at DaveArnott.com. If you have questions or suggestions for future podcasts, please submit them online or in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.